No one saw this coming. Not Washington, not Brussels, and certainly not even Amsterdam. Yet here we are. The Netherlands, one of America's closest allies, has made a move that could send shockwaves through the global semiconductor industry. And it's not backing down. It's incredible when you think about how much could hinge on just one decision. One bold move that could disrupt America's entire tech war strategy, with consequences that no one was fully prepared for. The Netherlands has chosen to defy U.S. pressure and, in doing so, has created a potential storm that could unravel the global semiconductor supply chain. ASML, the Dutch tech giant that controls 90% of the global lithography market, was expected to comply fully with Washington's semiconductor export bans, particularly targeting China. But instead, Reuters reports that ASML continues to ship deep ultraviolet DUV machines, critical for chip production, to Chinese companies, despite Washington's strong objections. This decision has far-reaching consequences. Not only does it undermine U.S. efforts to limit China's semiconductor capabilities, but it also raises a much deeper question. Is the Netherlands carving its own path in global trade, or is it engaging in calculated economic brinkmanship? ASML's decision is particularly significant, given the warnings from former CEO Peter Wenning, who had previously argued that cutting China off completely from advanced semiconductor technology would only accelerate Beijing's push to develop its own self-sufficient capabilities. And based on recent events, it's starting to seem like he was right. China's Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, SMIC, has recently made headlines by producing a 7-nanometer chip despite the heavy sanctions imposed by the U.S. This breakthrough is a stark reminder that Western tech dominance is no longer unchallenged, and it could represent the beginning of a technological shift. If ASML continues to ship machines to China, is it just prolonging its own market dominance, or is it setting itself up for eventual irrelevance? Forget oil, rare earth metals, or AI. Right now, ASML's extreme ultraviolet EUV lithography machines are the crown jewels of the semiconductor industry. These machines are required to manufacture the most advanced chips, and they come with an astronomical price tag. Each one costs over $380 million. Without these machines, China would be generations behind the U.S., Taiwan, and South Korea in chip production. This is why the Biden administration, through the CHIPS Act, pressured the Dutch government to block ASML from selling EUV machines to China. But here's where things get complex. ASML still dominates the market for older but still essential DUV lithography machines. These are critical for manufacturing chips that power everyday electronics. The U.S. wants to stop the sale of these machines to China, too, but the Netherlands is resisting. The financial stakes are massive. China accounted for 46% of ASML's total sales in 2023, bringing in over $7 billion. Cutting off China could create a significant revenue gap for ASML and shift dominance to Chinese-backed alternatives. The dilemma for the Netherlands is stark. If ASML complies with U.S. demands, it risks its own long-term financial stability. If it doesn't, it faces the possibility of upsetting its relationship with the United States one of its most crucial economic and political allies. At first glance, the Netherlands' decision to continue shipping DUV machines to China may look like an act of defiance. But there's another layer here, economic survival. Dutch officials are not only balancing diplomatic pressure from both the U.S. and China, they're also safeguarding ASML's role as a global tech leader. The Dutch government heavily subsidizes ASML, and any move to let Washington dictate its trade policy risks, making the Netherlands economically dependent on U.S. interests. This situation is even more complicated when you factor in Beijing's potential retaliation. China has already hinted at the possibility of blacklisting ASML if export restrictions tighten any further. According to Nikkei Asia, China is stockpiling ASML machines, accelerating its own domestic production of alternative lithography technology and has committed $143 billion to its semiconductor sector. The question for Dutch officials is, if they cave to U.S. pressure now, will they still have a viable market in China five years down the road? The broader strategic assumption from Washington is that without ASML's EUV machines, China simply cannot produce the most advanced chips. But that assumption is being tested in real time. A recent report from the Semiconductor Industry Association revealed that China produced 70% more advanced chips in 2023 than the year before, despite U.S. sanctions. 
The Netherlands' decision to resist full compliance with U.S. restrictions could end up accelerating China's technological advancements and bring Beijing much closer to closing the semiconductor gap with the West. Intel, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, and other major U.S. chipmakers are watching closely. The current export restrictions haven't reduced demand. They've simply shifted the global supply chain. Bloomberg reported that while the U.S. banned chip sales to Huawei, Chinese firms have found workarounds, sourcing chips from subsidiaries and third-party suppliers. If ASML continues its shipments to China, could Washington be inadvertently helping China become more self-sufficient in semiconductor production? The more the U.S. tightens semiconductor restrictions, the more China doubles down on self-sufficiency. Huawei's Mate 60 Pro smartphone, which features a 7-nanometer processor, shocked the industry because it wasn't supposed to be possible under current U.S. export bans. Now China is planning to scale this technology even further. According to Ken Global, China's state-backed chip fund has committed another $45 billion to domestic semiconductor companies like SMIC and YMTC, Yangtze Memory Technologies, which are rapidly advancing their own lithography technologies. Dutch semiconductor analyst Bert van der Rohe warns that the longer ASML keeps selling to China, the faster China's domestic industry will evolve. If the Netherlands is maintaining its trade ties with China for short-term profits, it may ultimately be enabling China to develop the very technology that will replace ASML in the future. This dilemma is playing out within a broader European context. The European Union has struggled to maintain a unified stance on trade policy, and the Netherlands' latest move has only widened the cracks. While countries like France and Germany have publicly supported Washington's position on restricting semiconductor sales to China, Behind the scenes, many European leaders are frustrated. Why? Because U.S. companies like Intel and AMD continue to receive exemptions that allow them to do business with Chinese firms. European policymakers are now asking a tough question. If the U.S. is protecting its own economic interests, why should Europe follow suit? Reports from the Financial Times reveal that European chipmakers such as STM Microelectronics and Infineon are quietly lobbying against full-scale bans. If the Netherlands' resistance to U.S. policy gains traction, it could inspire a broader European rebellion against Washington's trade stance. If that happens, the key question won't just be about ASML. It will be about whether the West itself is fracturing under the weight of competing economic self-interests. China currently controls more than 77% of global battery production, but its biggest vulnerability remains high-performance semiconductors, which are essential for electric vehicles, EVs. ASML, with its exclusive capability to produce EUV lithography machines, is the only company in the world that can manufacture the advanced chips required for cutting-edge automotive technology. The U.S. imposed strict export controls on China to prevent them from accessing this technology. But ASML's continued shipments of DUV machines are helping Chinese firms accelerate domestic alternatives. According to Bloomberg, China's EV sector is now the world's fastest growing with domestic EV sales expected to exceed 10 million units by 2024. If China manages to close the chip gap, it could dominate the entire EV supply chain, putting pressure on companies like Tesla, Volkswagen, and General Motors. Even though Washington expected full compliance from its allies, ASML's decision to keep shipping machines to China and China's aggressive push for self-sufficiency signal a growing defiance within the global trade network. According to the U.S. Bureau of Industry and Security, China increased its domestic semiconductor production by 38% in 2023, outpacing all expectations. SMIC, once reliant on foreign technology, recently produced a 7-nanometer chip using DUV machines, an accomplishment that U.S. officials once believed was impossible. ASML's decision to continue selling older-generation machines, even under tighter export restrictions, has emboldened countries like South Korea and Japan. These countries are now facing pressure from their domestic firms to ease semiconductor export policies, lest they lose market share to Chinese alternatives. Nikkei Asia reports that South Korea's chip exports to China surged by 41% in early 2024, suggesting that a global realignment of semiconductor supply chains may already be underway. China remains ASML's second-largest market accounting for 46% of its total sales in 2023, valued at over $7 billion.
If ASML were to cut off China entirely, it could face an immediate revenue gap that Europe's struggling semiconductor sector wouldn't be able to fill. NJ Bank analysts predict that if ASML fully complied with Washington's export restrictions, its revenue could drop by as much as 20% in the next two years, forcing mass layoffs and significant cuts in investments. The Dutch government, which views ASML as a national asset, has been reluctant to impose a full export ban without compensatory trade agreements. But if China succeeds in developing its own lithography industry, ASML could lose not just revenue, but also its technological dominance. This raises the critical question, is ASML simply buying time with China, or is it risking long-term obsolescence? The semiconductor war is not happening in isolation. It's part of a much broader economic standoff between China, the U.S., and the EU. The Financial Times reports that China has now imposed export restrictions on gallium and germanium, key materials for chip production, in retaliation against Western trade policies. Meanwhile, the U.S. is preparing a $39 billion subsidy expansion under the CHIPS Act to counter China's rising influence, while the EU is rushing to implement its own European CHIP Act worth $47 billion. This escalating tit-for-tat suggests that the ASML dispute is not just about semiconductors, it's part of a much larger economic realignment. If tensions continue to mount, we could see further restrictions on critical tech components, nationalization of supply chains, and Western firms being forced to pick sides in a full-blown economic cold war. If ASML continues selling restricted technology to China, U.S. trade officials could escalate by imposing secondary sanctions on European firms much like they did with Huawei suppliers. China's state-backed semiconductor fund, known as the Big Fund 2, has already committed $45 billion to develop its own lithography systems, with prototypes expected by 2026. If China succeeds in this effort, Taiwan's TSMC and South Korea's Samsung, both of which rely heavily on ASML machines, could lose their technological edge. Meanwhile, European semiconductor firms like Infineon and STM Microelectronics are becoming increasingly wary of over-reliance on U.S. policy decisions. Executives are pushing for more trade autonomy in closed-door meetings with EU officials. This suggests that we're not just witnessing a battle over semiconductor supply. We're also witnessing the possible fragmentation of the global chip industry into two competing ecosystems, one led by China, the other by the U.S., and its allies. For decades, Europe has managed to remain a neutral economic power, balancing its interests between the U.S. and China. But ASML's decision, whether driven by strategic calculation or economic necessity, could mark the moment when Europe's role as a neutral player begins to crumble. The U.S. expected the Netherlands to comply with its trade directives, but the resistance from Dutch officials has shown that European nations may no longer be willing to blindly follow Washington. Meanwhile, China is using the ASML dispute to expose divisions within the Western alliance, testing just how much economic pressure it can apply before U.S. allies begin to break ranks. If China succeeds in securing an alternative to ASML within the next decade, it will not only mark a technological shift, it will fundamentally alter the global balance of power. The Netherlands may have made a short-term decision based on economic interests, but the long-term consequences could reshape alliances and define the global economic landscape for decades to come. And if ASML ultimately loses its technological edge to China, this moment might be remembered as the day the West lost its monopoly over the future of computing. So if you think this is the biggest battle in the global semiconductor war, think again. Because something even bigger is unfolding right now, and it could change everything. A new player is emerging in this fight one that neither the US nor China expected. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and be sure to check out another video now on your screen.